everybody, welcome back to this podcast, my podcast, where it's just me and I talk and then you listen to me and, well, I think you have now started to to get it, uh, honestly. I think you get what's the point of this whole thing, you understand that what I expect from you is to have a nice time and entertain yourselves and... You know, just have me in the background or something like that. But that is not my real value here, my real value proposition. My real value that I may have in your lives and and reality is that I am here offering up myself like a lamb, like another Jesus offering myself to you, sacrificing myself so that you, dear audience, may correct me. That's what I'm here for, right? Because sure, everybody wants to be entertaining and fun and I understand I want that, but you want that, everybody wants that. Why wouldn't you, right? But is everybody as brave and selfless I may say, as selfless as I am, being here, offering up endless possibilities for you to jump in and say how stuff is actually pronounced, said, mentioned, everything. Just, I don't, I think this is unique. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that um, that is a beautiful moment, unique moment, where the stars have aligned perfectly with me being a person that, well, nobody likes to be corrected. Of course, I don't love being corrected, but I am fine with it. I mean, I have to. First of all, I'm in a, speaking in a different language and in a different country and blah, blah, blah. But mostly, I'm a little bit stupid. So that means I have learned for my survival to rely on this kindness of strangers and their, their, their kindness to correct me, as a matter of fact, for, for a lot of things like being in the wrong bus or uh, being uh, in the wrong house or, you know, just things like that happens to everybody, I think. So Thank you for jumping into the opportunity in my previous video for saying to me many times, time after time after time after time, that Led Lappen is not how everybody in Sweden called Batman. Maybe it was once, maybe, we're not sure about this either, maybe it was once, but not anymore. And everybody has to know that. And I have to know that, right? I mean, not really, but come on. Hey, isn't that the point? To learn. So thank you and thanks for getting it. Like, I may not be able to make everybody laugh, but I am able to make everybody feel smart, (laughs) right? This I can do. This I can do day in, day out, and I don't even have to try. I don't need to put any effort in it whatsoever. So please, come on, come, everybody, here, come here, listen to me. So many things, so many opportunities in every sentence, so many things that will make you feel like, oh, thank God, (laughs) I may may be, you know, misremember stuff sometimes, but it's not that bad. I may not remember my postal code sometimes and have to google it but hey it's not that bad so listen to me correct me please come along uh what did i want to say oh yeah right uh well you may be able to tell already but i was at the eras tour concert and eras concert tour at the eras anyways you understand the taylor swift concert how shocked i am that this actually happened i could not believe this You can tell probably from my face already. Um, I mean, it's not, I didn't just come back from it right now, but uh, I I recreated the look. Uh, The concert was actually some time ago, it was about a week ago, but I recreated it um, in honor and because I liked it. I liked it so much. 
So I, I didn't expect I would be able to actually go to the tour because, you know, it's one of those big events where the tickets are out and then next moment the tickets are out, like out. So even though I would like to go, I didn't even bother looking. I was 100% sure, like immediately, I'm not going to find tickets for this just came in my head straight away. Yeah, sure, it sounds nice. No. Like, there's a ton of people with a lot more strength, desperation, power of character, really, uh, discipline uh, that will be there. And uh, they will press the button as soon as the clock hits midnight. Or, or, or whatever, you understand how I mean it, like the moment the tickets go on. So I just persuaded myself there was no way I was going to get tickets. That's it. I'm just, I'm just slow. I'm, I'm slow to react to stuff. So I just didn't expect it. But then, since I thought of that, for, in multiple occasions, I heard, oh, there's, there's more tickets. I don't know how this happens. Like... I thought this is something that they do in, I don't know, in Greece, in some folk festivals, just carry extra white chairs and put them in the, in the, in the place. Do they just, are they just, do they have some grandpa carrying white chairs and white plastic chairs and they add them in the, in the stadium, in the French arena? And then there's more, and more tickets? I, I, no, don't know. No idea. Don't ask me. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe what is more likely, they just, you know, keep some tickets to make sure that uh, slow people like myself have the possibility to also get the tickets. I have no idea, but no joke, I got my tickets the day before the concert. Because I was like, so many times I just, I was waiting. And so many times there were more tickets. I don't know where they come from. I don't know if they do it in the greek way with the with the plastic chairs i don't know what it is but whatever it is maybe there's still hope so i got in put on my running shoes there's no reason i just like to put on my running shoes before i have to do something important gives me the sense of alertness you know i put on my running shoes then i opened Ticketmaster and i found tickets <laughs> good job thank you so much so fast i was right only Nine months later, probably, like nine months to a year later, after the boom at the starting line, I was able to finish just in time. Some people may say late, I say just in time for the actual event. That's what I think. So I went there and it was, it's such a beautiful thing to see so many people being dressed up and I was, I definitely wanted to, to, to partake. I don't know, though, what era I am. Can you tell what era I am? Is this, um, is this something that you can... Um, I don't know. I mean, I have a, a gold a sparkly top and I have um, um, some blue in my eyes and some gold and some, and some glitter tears. I have glittery tears because uh, I am fabulous, but I also honor my feelings and feel my feelings. That's, uh, that's what this is all about. So, you know, I don't know what, my, what era this is from, to be honest. I, I thought it was so much fun with all the people dressing up for different eras. I tried to find one era that I can fit better. I watched all these, like, different mood boards they have online and was trying to, like, hmm, okay, this is, this, this is, there, there's one era that is basically like this, Swedish student, student and <laughs> every student when they graduate in Sweden they just dress like they all belong to the same cult just long white dresses with like poofy sleeves or like clean and it's it's super cute but also kind of horrifying at the same time um so there was an era that was that was like this but I, I'm not I'm not from Sweden if I was I would probably have a student and dress I'd be able to fit in right away so I had to piece it together myself and, you know, I couldn't quite find it. I still don't know what era I am, to be honest. And then I thought, well, who cares? 
right? Doesn't matter. The, the whole point is self-expression, right? That's what all of this is for. It's not a dress code event where you have to be dressed in a certain way. It's, it's, it's just to have, for extra fun, for extra, I don't know, participation. It's not like the Met Gala. It's not like you're going to have a bunch of people rating how well you interpreted the era. No. I mean, they probably will if they see you, but it doesn't matter still, okay? It's not, that's not the point of the whole thing. It's just to, just to express yourself, right? So, I don't know what era I am, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm the common era. I'm the common era. After uh, 1 BC or something. I'm not sure how to say that. It's, it's all about just expressing yourself. I think it's such an amazing opportunity to do that and to cry glitter and, you know, I, wanted, I, I would love to do this more. And I just, I realized this, that so many lost opportunities because, I mean, makeup and clothes, such an amazing way to express yourself and to have fun. But when? That's the key question. When? When is the good time? Because I remember clearly Clearly, when I was a little, little girl, you know, in school, little child, and looking at all those um, colors and all these, all the school things, looking at the grown-up makeup and the big palettes with the many colors, you know, just like the, the palettes that I was using to draw, to, to paint and draw and, and stuff. Um, but those are for, for your face. Like, how much cooler is this? And it seems so fantastic, but... Well, I couldn't have fun with that. I couldn't use it because everyone is like, oh, you're, you're a little kid. This is for grown-up women. Uh, it's just you should go play with your whatever. Well, you know, you can't. You can't have fun. You can't put all the colors to your face. You have, you have to, and everybody just points at the stupid paper and it's like, okay, yeah, paint, but like inside this square, not outside of it. No, don't put it in your face. Don't eat it. It's not made for you to eat. It's 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 a temp tempera. How do you say? A liquid paint is not meant to be eaten. Don't eat the paint. Don't waste my nail polish. Don't use the makeup because it's expensive. You can have your own makeup. You can only have it when you're a teenager. So uh, you just paint on this boring square. And sometimes the wall. Let's be honest. Sometimes the wall too. Okay, but come on, everybody can paint the wall over. That shouldn't be a big deal. Anyways, then you're a teenager. You're like, no, when I'm a teenager, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this. It's okay. I understand. I am a child. Children are doomed. I can't have fun. Everybody says that it's the time to have fun, but then all the tools are removed from my hands. So I'm going to have to wait. When I'm a teenager, that's the time. Because then I will be able to have makeup. Then I'll be allowed. Then you're a teenager. You get makeup. But you can't express yourself. You can't use makeup for joy. Just for, for fun and joy. Are you stupid? You're a teenager. You have to, you know, fit in. And uh, be like a... Look cool. The exact opposite than, you know, trying and being different and, I don't know, flamboyant. But the, no, no, shh, no. Just the most cool, uninterested, un, unattached you can, version of yourself you can be the best. Okay. Plus you have all those issues with your skin. You have, you know, you have acne and the new hair that you haven't figured out how to treat it, if you're Greek at least. <laughs> this, this combination with like fresh face hair and acne and like pop glitter on top. I don't know, it feels, it, it, it's giving you an anxiety or rather it increases your anxiety that you already have. By the way, I think this is I think this is brilliant. I think that if you have skin issues that are giving you a hard time and you make you feel anxious, throwing glitter on top of them 
distraction. You think it makes it look worse, but I don't think it does. I think it acts as a distraction force and confuses, confuses the um, opponent. When I'm older, then it's gonna be the time for this. Then I'm gonna have fun with makeup. Cause then I won't have to go to school. I won't have to see all of my, my classmates. If I go at a party and I look ridiculous, no one's going to remember this for the next five years at school. Like, no. So, makeup, when you're an adult, suddenly becomes another kind of symbol for adulthood. It becomes an adult thing. It's like, it's this filter you put in front of your face to hide the sadness <laughs> and um, create a serious, professional, business-like, outgoing, extroverted, but not too much friendly, out there, but also up here impression. Does this make sense at all? It's like, I think it's maybe not exactly equivalent, but it's a bit like the way that men wear neckties. Like you wanna show that you mean business, you know, that you care enough to put effort into this. But this is important, this is an important occasion, okay? Either professionally or socially, whatever it is. It's just like, look, this is me, but I care and you can tell that because this is not my bare skin. And then the other thing is that also when you're adult, an extra factor that comes into play is the skill, right? Because, okay, sure, it's something that you do by yourself, to your face, just not bothering anyone else, but, but it's also like a serious skill, like people go to university to learn this or like some academy or something like that, like it's serious, right? People that are artists in that, they, they spend their lives perfecting it. And then there's people that, that, that hire those people. And there's this, this it's, it's a whole thing, right? So you feel a bit, you feel a little bit stupid, you know? It's, there's, a, there's a bit of a, you don't wanna disregard the skill, right? I don't know how to say, it's like, a, it's like driving, maybe. And you can't just get your license for a scooter and the next day jump on a truck and start driving around. Like, it's gonna be... awkward. If you have a license for a scooter, you know how to drive a scooter, Maybe it's better you stick to the scooter, right? You don't just you don't just jump on a truck and start driving around and wondering what all the buttons are for. <laughs> you can tell that I don't I don't drive. I don't, that's how I imagine trucks are. They have buttons, you know, like the like airplanes, right? This is not how it works. People are going to get mad at you. They will see that you're you know you're you're driving not in a very safe way. They're gonna be like, hey. Hey, there, driver, take a second. I can see that you are driving a truck, but you drive like you're driving a scooter. That is not okay. You should take your time, learn first. First you learn how to drive the truck, then you get on the truck. I think that's how I feel about makeup a lot of times. Like I see all the colors and all the stuff and I'm like, yeah, that's nice, but I can't, I need to read some books for that. I don't know why. <laughs> so now you are free to do whatever you want, but suddenly other issues come into play. Do you have the skill for that? And then is this enough of a necktie? Or like, you know, like I said, it's like with the neckties. You wear it to be, to be serious. But if you go overboard with the necktie, has the opposite effect. You have a crazy glittery necktie. Now that's a bit like, I don't know, is it a, what's the occasion, you know? 
it becomes its own thing. Um, you, people that have neckties with, I don't know, silly stuff, uh, weird patterns, cartoons, glitter sort of, I mean, if it's, if it's glitter, if it's like a, a paillette or something like this, people are gonna think you um, came from some type of event um, that you, or you are some type of event yourself. Doesn't work. So where does this all leave us? Where does this leave all of us? When is the time? When does the time come? Because it wasn't then, or then, or now, or later. When does it come? I don't know. There is a possibility about uh, when you're really, when you're old, when you're an old lady, maybe that is the time uh, to have fun. And in fact, we do see a lot of old ladies that have a makeup that is so much more fun, so much brighter, they use a lot of colors, they have, you know, but also because we know that uh, the vision may be declining a little bit with age, it's hard to say if it was intentional. I might be being very mean accidentally now. I'm gonna take a second. Oh well. When is the time? When is the time? When is the time? No, that was not a rhetorical question. That was a real question. When is the time? I want you to tell me. Say it. Just say it. Say it. Say it out loud. I know what... Look, whatever you're thinking, the thing that you're thinking about when the time is, is the correct answer. Okay, let's say it. Three, two, one. Before the sour. Yes. Yes, that's the correct answer. The, the time... What did you say? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, no, I heard, uh, I must have misheard. The time that you have fun with makeup is before the shower. That is the time. You just, that is when you, you know, you have the, the, the necktie makeup, the regular, simple, sort of, okay, natural makeup, and you're about to go into the shower, and then you get this. I have 15 extra minutes. That was my look for today. It was nice. I liked it. I liked me. But what if? I just had a little bit of this and this and this and this and that. Okay, it doesn't happen at once. It happens, it, it, it just, it evolves a little bit naturally. Okay, it's not a conscious decision you make. Or like, it is a conscious decision, a conscious decision, but you make it later. Like you start with just like, Okay, yeah, sure, that's where I put my eyeliner, but what if I just went, you know, crazy today and did like five extra millimeters? You know, you put it a little bit extra, five extra millimeters. You're like, hmm, that's nice. At first, it's nice. At, st at first, the a little bit extra is nice. You're like, okay. Um, well, I didn't use any colors, I had, uh, I had brown, but what about some, like, pink? Let's see some pink, you know, put some pink. Oh, that's nice! That's actually nice! You know what? Why not some purple also? Let's, in the corners, so we've got some purple, like, wow! That's amazing! Like, I have to take photos, I'm gonna do this tomorrow. I'm doing this tomorrow already, this is so silly, like, why don't I use more colors than my makeup? This, why? Why not? You know what? I have this, I think I have this glitter from like um, forever in my, uh, I have this glitter for, for Christmas wrapping. Get this here. Everywhere. Here. In, in 10 minutes, there is no empty space in your face for nothing else anymore. Because there's been... 50 different shades of rouge, rouge, is that how you say, blush, 50 different shades of blush, like 50 different types of glitter, uh, like glitter is over, you start grabbing anything that is around, anything, like what is this, I don't know, um, rhinestones, how did this start with the rhinestones? I think it started like this, the, 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 the rhinestone, rhinestone, or rhinestone, rhinestone trend started with a pre, 
sour makeup game and somebody was like I don't have any space for 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 color or glitter but I can stick something on my face okay and started removing crime stones of their of someone's shirt and just like you know lick it and pop it the moment you step into the sour it's not when you have reached the peak of, oh my God, this is amazing. Look at me. I, lo I look fantastic. No, it's the moment when you look. It's not even the moment when you think you're finished. It's not even the moment when you have run out of space in your face. It's the moment you run out of materials. When you start running out of eyeshadow. There is no more eyeshadow in the box. That's when I'm gonna step in the shower. That's when I know that it's time for me to go clean myself. Okay, when I start seeing the, the, the silver on top of the eyeshadow, because I've used all of it and it starts becoming silver, this is the time for me to go in. And all of my little, you know, the little kid inside of me gets so excited and the teen inside of me is so freed and like, there is no stopping. There is no stopping at this point. You just go on and on until you look like a combination of an alien, a, a Amazonian tribe leader and a disco ball all at once. Like, I have to take a photo of this. I'm, go I'm, I'm going to post it. Next time I have a pre-sour makeup session, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to post it. That's the time. How sad. I mean, sure, it's exciting, but it's also sad. Exciting and sad. It's exciting because it's better than nothing, but it's sad because we don't have to, like, go crazy and, you know, um, put ourselves and uh, our, our, our housemates in danger by scaring them every time. You know, there's no reason. Let's keep it balanced. Find some beautiful occasions that we can, have some fun, go a bit extra, like, like the concert. That's why I love this experience of uh, being at the concert and being dressed extra, seeing other people dressed in sparkly stuff. Um, and I got to, you know, cry glitter and all of those things. Lovely. It was amazing. It was amazing. That was amazing. Um, and, and I haven't even been to the concert yet, right? Now we're only talking about the pre-gaming. This is just the pre-gaming. This is me having like a pre-sour makeup situation. And then instead of going in the sour, poop, I go to the concert. How fantastic. Uh, I love this. And like I said, not even in the concert yet. And I'm already loving this. Just from the pre-gaming, just from the, you know, whole atmosphere and, and situation before the concert. I haven't even been there. Now, the moment I step through the door to go to the concert is where the problems begin. Of course, which happens because, again, I'm an idiot. So I walk through the doors. People are giving me my bracelets that I need to be admitted into my, the section where I should be. My first thought is, they're trying to sell me something. <laughs> no, 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 I know better. I know better. You know those, 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 those sketchy salesmen of the, con of the, con of the concerts standing just right behind the ticket area cuts you when you are the most, you know, distracted, when you are trusting, just as you are happy to go have some fun, that's when they get you. Because in my head, that's how it works. The, the people at the, at the concert that are doing their, their job, making sure you have everything you need before you, you get on, before you get at the stage area. Yeah, in my head, they were like, I don't know, the, the jewel salesman, Jewelry, jewelry salesmen and women in Greece, in the islands, you know, those people. Maybe that's why I was so, I don't know, maybe that's why I was so, I don't know, you know, 
skeptical against them. Because uh, that's how that's how people there's people in Greece in the summers in the summer in the islands, but actually this is their um, this is how they sell you stuff. This is their policy. This is their sales style. Just come, put stuff in you, go like, oh my god, gorgeous, fantastic, you look so amazing. Then they're gonna give you a price. Then you're like, yeah, but don't I have to pay you something? No, 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 no. We don't don't think about money. It's not about don't think about money all the time. Just like, just relax for a second, okay? Take, take a breath. Look at the sun. Feel the air in your face. Look at yourself. Look how beautiful you are. Just enjoy the joy of, of the moment. Enjoy your youth. Enjoy your vitality. Are you enjoying it? Okay, 35 euros. It is real gold almost all the way like maybe halfway like i don't remember cards and stuff because i don't i don't remember them by heart by life but like it's gonna last it's gonna last forever like your grandkids are gonna look at this and they're gonna think about you and all the stories they've heard okay so um apparently um that got me a bit extra you know um but i'm, I'm that was so stupid can you understand the idiocy of this person that's a funny thing with with greeks you know like we love greek stuff i'm gonna run after anything that is free but only after you tell me it's free if they don't tell you explicitly this is free not even close not even close you see people like where they're they're offered free coffee or you know um and they will you know they will just look at it with the side of their eyes and walk away i'm sure that when when we started getting on airplanes people would not get coffee because they would be afraid of how much it costs and then once of course they realized there's it's a, it's a bottomless bottomless coffee uh okay so so yeah, so here I am at the air store, following the, the arrows pointing me to where I'm supposed to go. And then they're like, well, yeah, this is, where, this is where you're supposed to go. This is what your ticket says. This is where you should be. But you don't have a bracelet. So where are you going? You can't go in. But it's my ticket. Yes, we can see. Your ticket says that you have to go in. But your empty wrists tell us that you're an imposter. Because do you know, miss? Do you know, miss? Do you know what this is? This is the golden circle. <gasps> wow. Wow. The golden circle. I mean, I've no idea what it is. But it sounds like super serious. It sounds like Illuminati, you know. Like we're gonna have orgies after the concert. Um, how do you say? Mid-century thing, costumed orgies. Right at the arena. Is that what the golden circle is? Are we exchanging trade secrets while uh, souring each other or something? What is, what is it? Uh, the golden circle apparently... In, in reality is the location, is the part of the audience that is right in front of the stage. Okay, it's where the party happens, where you go when you wanna, you know, you wanna party, you wanna step and be stepped upon, right? You're like, okay, yes, yeah, sure, I want my toes, but also I wanna have fun, right? So you go there. That's where I go. I'm one of those psychopaths. I like to feel like I'm where the action is. I have this, yeah, I don't know what it is with me. I know there's something wrong with all of us that are there, uh, but I don't know what. It doesn't matter. Maybe one day I will figure it out. Moral of the story, when you go to a concert, when you pass the gate and people are giving you seat, take the seat, accept the seat, be grateful, say thank you and walk on. It's okay, it's fine. It's safe, it's good, it's free, it's free, I promise you. 
you have in the back, like a, a backstage and the first stage, then you have a long corridor and then most of the concert actually takes place in a main stage, which is further ahead uh, towards the audience and right after the area of like the golden circle. So when you are in the golden circle, what happens is you will mostly see, <laughs> you'll see Taylor Swift and the dancers and the singers and everybody. And you'll have walk, walk by in the corridor and you have the, the unique opportunity to uh, wave hi to them as they're going to the concert. You're like, hey, hi, have fun, <laughs> have fun at the concert, enjoy yourselves, see you later, bye bye. And then they pass you over and then you get to, well, watch the concert in the, in the screen is with everybody else <laughs> while everyone's playing right behind your back. You have a nice time, you party, you dance, step be stepped upon, blah, blah, blah. Then they come back, you're like, oh, hey, <laughs> hi, how was it? Was it fun? Oh, you, we loved it. It was so nice, so nice to see you. You had a nice time. We had a nice time too. Um, see you later, bye-bye. And then they prepare for the next, um, for the next era and, and, and so it goes. So that, that is a unique opportunity that affords you, that, that the golden circle uh, Illuminate cast affords you. I loved the concert so much. I had such an amazing time. It's like, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's, it's long and that is there. That's a, that's a really cool thing. It's like you get to have such a rich experience. Because, you know, even if it's a shorter concert, you, the, 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 the hassle is the same, you know, you still have to go and queue and get in and, and, and get your bracelets, etc. So, um, to have an, an even longer and even richer experience, I think is so fantastic uh, for people who anyways are going to go through a certain hassle to, to be there in the first place. I loved it so much. Uh, 100% worth the, the tinnitus that I got the next day. I got tinnitus, completely my fault. 100% my fault. It's this thing that you get in your ear that you hear like an... Okay, I'm overdoing it a little bit. It's not like you don't hear people talk. You can hear everything else as well. But you also hear this little... Like the freeze does sometimes. You know, like imagine a fridge, like a tiny fridge inside your ear, making the sound not very nice, not very nice. But 100% my fault. It's my fault. I might as well have went there and be like, everybody give me the night us. You know, might as well have prayed. Might as well have went to the church and sat down and, and prayed to dear God to please give me tinnitus. You know, might as well have googled how to get tinnitus and, and followed through doing every, checking every item of this list. I asked for it. I asked for it. I, I fought and I got it. Because who goes to a concert in, in the golden circle without ear uh, plugs and ear puffs or whatever and, and expects to be fine the next day. Come on. I'm, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done this. This is a hundred percent, a hundred percent on me. That said, <laughs> I don't think that I got, that I got it from, from the concert. I think that the levels was, even though of course, obviously it was very loud, I think it was it, it, it didn't feel loud, you know, it didn't, I never felt like, oh, my ears, you know, are hurting, it feels, it's, it's uncomfortable, it's too loud, I would have moved further back, you know, I didn't feel at all that there was, um, that it was loud, too loud when it comes to the music, but I did feel it when it came to the screaming, <laughs> I mean, it's the air stir, come on, you expect a certain amount of screaming, you know, every time Taylor Swift, as much as 
looks at our direction. It's like everybody is, is, is rehearsing what to do in case of a, of a wild animal attack. Okay, what if we get attacked right now by a pack of hyenas? How are we gonna scream like, three, two, one, Pwah! give it. That's it. That's what was happening every single time, every time. Tell your shift as much as looked at us or moved her hand or God forbid her stick to our direction. Total chaos, right? This very moment. Uh, there's people, there's people that were in this concert. I'm a hundred percent sure that the next day after the concert, their voice was in a worse condition, more hurt than Taylor Swift's, who was singing for three hours. No, there's people, there's people at this concert that have not spoken a single word to this very day. Until today, they're just drinking this and, and, and popping strep seals left and right and, and, and <laughs> deep with regret saying, what, what, what was I thinking? And this girl next to me, this, this poor girl, I'm sure I gave her tinnitus. Anyways, one thing that I know for sure is I'm not going anywhere near screaming people ever again without earplugs. Concerts, obviously, definitely, you need to get your earplugs for concerts. You also need them for screaming people. Come on now, get serious. Okay, if you're gonna, I don't know, meet um, some, some football, you go to the football um, event, how do they say, game, to the football game, or, uh, you know, visit some angry family member, Boop. you need your earplugs. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. You think because it's, you think that because we're, we're, we're built to produce human voice, I don't know, you would assume that we're also capable of consuming human voice, but no. There is a level. There's a level for everything. Human voice can definitely be too much for humans. The night is left but not the glitter. The glitter persists. The glitter will last for years. It will stay in my bloodstream. I feel so lucky I was able to go. I was afraid I would not. I told you, I got my tickets last moment. I was prepared to not only sit out sit the concert out. I was prepared to sit out the entire weekend because I thought, well, there's going to be so many people around. What about this? What about the parking? What about the subway? You don't want to be, you don't want to lose your parking that day. You don't want to be anywhere near the subway <laughs> if possible. Like I was thinking I was going to stay at home for the whole weekend and, and play Baldur's Gate. That was my plan. And that didn't happen. But you know what? It's going to happen. Because I got a bit excited about that. For a second, I was almost a bit like, ooh, <laughs> I can't do anything the whole weekend. <gasps> what a tragedy. <laughs> I guess I'm forced to play games now. Hmm, poor me. How may I survive this, this curse of a fate that I have now? Just having to play all night until I fall asleep on top of my controller. Oh, no. Well. I can't. It's too delicious. I'm gonna have to do it anyway. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the weekend playing, like I was planning to do at the Eras weekend. I I can't I, I I can't stop playing Baldur's Gate. It's just too amazing. I think I'm not going to play any other game ever again. I don't think there's reason for that. Like you know, I can I can finish it. I'm I've been playing for a very long time, and now I only now just finished the first act. The first act. What? And I'm doing it two times because I'm doing it with two different characters. Because I, I had a wizard and then I was like, that's a little bit boring. I want something else. And then I, want, I got a bard. So I do it with a wizard, then I do it with a bard. I do it with a wizard to win and then I do it with a bard to like lose with style. I have two different characters. It's uh, El Dracora. It's my sorcerer. And uh, Piperel. She's my, she's my bard. She's so cool. 
maybe I will just um, I'll stream it so I show you my character. I can't keep Piperel all to myself. She's too amazing. I need to share it. I say I need to share her with the world. I need to share Piperel with with the world, so you get to see this um, unbelievably kind, courageous, and ridiculous uh, little uh, character that I have created. And I don't say little just because she's tiny. That's not what I mean at all. There's absolutely nothing to do. I just said it for the cuteness. So yeah, there's gonna be more Baldur's Gate, definitely. You know, actually, I think my experience at the Eras Tour can help me appreciate now even more staying inside and playing games. As a matter of fact, I started writing a song um, so I can process my my feelings uh, better about the game and about one character in particular, not the whole game, but there's this particular character. Uh, he's a sorcerer, his name is Gay, and I have such complicated feelings about this character, it's very hard to to explain them. So I, 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 I just I put them in a song, maybe I will share it with you if I have it finished, uh, if I if I have it. Um, such complicated feelings, really. I don't know. I mean, I just... I have him in my group, in my party, as, as you say. And he just... He's so freaking useless. He always dies. Okay. And I love it. And then I go and I, I pay some money to some skeleton dude to resurrect him. And then I resurrect him. And then I go back to battle... And I, resur I have him, you know, I've paid to have him up in the party only for the joy that I can watch him die again. I'm like, oh, yes, yes. I want to see the life go out of this man again and again and again. I can't have enough of this, you know. I'm, gonna, I'm spending all my money just killing and resurrecting Gale. That's what's going on. I've, I've gotten a second job as a bard. I'm also, like, waiting in taverns so I can afford... Kill and resurrect Gale a few extra times. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's never enough. Never enough. Um, so. It was amazing. You know, it's a, it was also so cool to see that there were so many Americans. A lot of Americans came for the concert in, in Sweden. Because it was actually cheaper to fly all the way from the US to Sweden or, or other European countries as well um, and, and buy the ticket than to buy the ticket in, in America. Insane. Can't believe this. But, well, I th I'm sure that everybody who came to Sweden had at least uh, appreciated the atmosphere because Stockholm in this weekend was like overwhelmingly went along, you know. The weekend of the era store in Stockholm felt like some type of national holiday, you know, when it's like, uh, I don't know, Christmas or something, and everybody is, um, you know, is dressed a little bit, you know, uh, festive, and you have special products and special music and special, you know, everything. Just think about what does it mean to, to be in, in the city in Christmas? What is special about the city in Christmas? Well, all of those things we had in Stockholm, but like for the air store, like Taylor Swift. So you'd have people being dressed on theme. You'd have the songs, even special food. I saw that there, there was a place that served the broken heart cake for the Eras weekend. Are you serious? Like leave it to Swedes to make a museum about a, a disco group. <laughs> There's an ABBA museum in Stockholm. Come on now. It's obvious, you see it coming. It's gonna happen, you know it's gonna happen. You know they're gonna go overboard. There's an ABBA museum. When Sweden couldn't have any more ABBA, you know, thought about it and made 
the smart, responsible, sustainable choice, you know what? We're gonna clone them. Why not? I mean, thank God they made digital clones at least. You know, the avatars, like they call them. And they didn't make actual clones. You know, take DNA from like, I don't know, <laughs> Bjorn's tiny hair or, and, and, and recreate baby abbas and have them in some kind of greenhouse and, and, and throw them like wheat and glitter to grow. Okay, my camera ran out of battery and I had to change it. I, I, it's better I don't start with ABBA now. Okay, it's a, it's a very, it's a huge topic. Maybe they need its own episode. Uh, maybe I'll go to the museum. Hey, I'll just go have a visit to the museum and then I can talk about it afterwards. I'm, but I'm not gonna start this now. Don't, don't, no, no, don't insist. Don't push me. Stop pushing me, okay? I, I'm doing things in my own pace. I can't start this now. I want it. God knows I want it, but I can't. We're running late. Um, I'm running out of space, batteries, time, energy, will to live, everything. Everything is just, just, I'm just bleeding resources every moment. I stay awake, to be honest. So come on, I'm gonna have to leave it now. I'm gonna have to leave you, I'm gonna have to say goodbye. Um, if you have the chance to go to the Air Store, you, uh, I think it's a fantastic experience. Uh, the gold, in the Golden Circle too, why not? Why not, you know? I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It also gives you the chance to, to practice how to be in stressful situations. Uh, you know, if you want to be in the front and like have a party, but you're scared because maybe somebody will push you or step on you, see it as an opportunity to, to practice assertiveness to practice how you can stand and signal you know around you like you can't move me I'm a rock I have, I have roots at this place you cannot move me okay um, or to understand social cues quickly to understand how you can move uh, from one space to a different which there's one way to move by the way the, the one way that you can use to move um, further to the front or in a different, is you wait and if there is another, another person that moves, another little stream of people moving, may I say, but appears, you just follow them. You step behind the line, pretend that you're with them, you follow them and you move wherever it is they're going. You just follow them at this point. Okay, it's happened to me. I, one time I just, I just, I had to move a little bit to go get a water, I moved, looked back, three people behind me. I'm like, where are you going? They're like, we thought you, you are the leader. We don't know, we're just following you. Okay, what was I saying? I was saying goodbye. <laughs> okay, so uh, goodbye, thank you so much for uh, watching, listening to this and I'll uh, see you again next week. Have a fun week, bye-bye.